Okie dokie. Here we go. We're going to finish up with finish up making some uh, fine tinder here. Don't know how great the angle is. I changed it up just a little bit. Um, I'm going to keep making this, you know, fine tinder here. Get it at the bottom of my um, pile. And we'll light it up with the ferro rod. And it is cold out here, guys. No joke. Cold out here. So I am not going to screw around being all Joe Tactical or Joe Survival or Peggy Lou Sue um, Firemaker. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is use a uh, use an item called Tinder Quick, which is more or less a whole bunch of cotton, like basically a giant cotton ball that has been pressed with some sort of heat pr press or whatnot and then covered in wax to burn longer and it's kind of shaped like a small dog bone is the best way I can describe it. I'll show it to you guys in just a second here. And they burn for like a minute or two, something like that. I've had really good luck with them. Some other people haven't, whatever. But for all the times I've used them, they have been really good uh, fire start helps, you know, helping, helping me get a fire started or whatnot. And, uh, you know, they'll light up these these tinder shavings real quick and then we can get our whole fire built get nice and warmed up again and then cook our cook us some supper maybe hot chocolate something like that because uh, I did bring that out thinking it's gonna be cold first winter camping experience I may or may not want a you know little pick-me-up especially in the morning here yep have a little Sunday morning um, hot chocolate there so I think that's probably good and to all the people on the internet who are saying you're doing it wrong you should do it this way or that way or whatever I have this experience that experience this is how the way you should do it uh, to all you guys you're probably right but in my personal experience uh, I have had really good luck uh, lighting fires like this for years you know not that I've been along that not that I've been alive that long kind of a young person but uh, I have lit a lot of fires in this manner, a lot, probably up there in the hundreds. And this has worked for me just fine for all of those times. And so we're going to just keep on going with that and uh, light it up here. Kind of running out of technique to uh, <laughs> cut these up because my hands are getting tired. All right. Not going to be all tactical either and strike it with the uh, knife here. Um, you see, this is more or less, I don't know where in the camera that is, but this is more or less what it looks like. Just a tubular piece of cotton dipped in wax. We'll set it right down here by the uh, shavings. I'll light it up with the uh, light my fire. Yeah, Swedish light my fire, fire steel. This thing has worked really good for me. And again, to all the people who know how to use this better than I do, cool. This is just how I how I use it, and it's cold, so I'm just gonna right there, and we have it lit. There we go. Have it lit. We'll let that burn for a little bit. Get some smaller kindling pieces ready. And then we'll have ourselves a nice toasty fire. Nice toasty fire. Tinder Quick is having a little bit of trouble warming up, it looks like. Not burning too great. If we can get another couple pieces burning over here. One thing about wood shavings, they make a really good fire starting tinder, but you have to be real ready to go to the real stuff because they do not burn long. So once you get your once you get your fire started, you need to, and of course the tinder quick has gone out, great. As soon as you get it started, 
you need to go right to the bigger stuff you know not really big but medium sized stuff get that started then get the big stuff started as quick as you can and then from there you can kind of kick back and relax but for the first for the first couple minutes of pretty much any fire that you're building out in you know the wilderness not that there's not a lot of wilder or not that there is a lot of wilderness left but um you know for us for those of us who are out in the woods enjoying enjoying what nature has left um yeah there we go just needed to spread out a little bit looks like yeah there we go and for any of the people who are wondering why I batoned that wood and uh, made all these wood shavings and whatnot and didn't just use, you know, some paper for my back or for my uh, bag or something like that to start the fire or whatever. Uh, number one, I like doing it with, you know, natural materials. And number two, um, this wood has been rained on and snowed on very recently. So all the moisture is on the outside of the wood, which means... If you tried to get it started with like some bark on the outside of, you know, outside of a tree, outside of a stick, something like that, there's no way. It's just totally wet. It may look dry, you know, to most people, but it is definitely not. Definitely not dry. Uh, which means you have to baton the wood to get to the center of it, or at least somewhere um, around the center. Uh, get to the middle there. And then, um, see, like this piece here, this is just a piece of the bark. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but I can see there's just water all over in it. I mean, there's frozen water down there and whatnot, everything. Um, you know, so that is definitely no bueno for fire starting. But this stuff, where it's in by the middle, this is perfect. Perfect stuff, because it's nice and dry. It'll hold a flame nicely. And this is a little bit of a tedious process. It's a lot harder than if you just threw a bundle of newspaper on a bunch of sticks in your backyard. But that's kind of why I like it. Not kind of. That is why I like it. Nice and fun for me. You can have your entire fire there. Just working on getting it started here. So... You guys probably do not want to listen to me ramble and ramble and try to get this fire started and whatnot. So I'm going to shut you off and then bring you back when I have a nice roaring fire. My feet are nice and toasty and maybe have a little bit of supper cooking. Uh, check it out. Kicking back just a little bit. See if you guys can hear this. Just listen. hear all the little crackles and pops and blurps and all those tiny little sounds sizzles that come from a beautiful little fire beautiful little fire um, let me grab my headlamp here and I just sat down one second guys doo, 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 doo. bear with me Literally sat it down and now it is gone. I have to pull out my Zippo for some light. And there it is. All right. Sorry about that. Bear with me. One more second here. We're going to go through my campsite pretty much all set up. Uh, here is um, my cooking stuff here. I'm going to put my headlamp on real quick so that you guys can see. Alrighty, so we have an isobutane container here. I've set it up on some wood blocks just to make it a little bit more level. Then we have a tokes bag that I have a whole bunch of gut, uh, goodies shoved into. Uh, first thing on top, uh, this credit probably goes to a buddy of mine named Daniel. Who used it first on a hiking trip I saw this is just a um, regular handkerchief that you use to take your uh, hot cup off of the stove and inside here we have a sponge inside of a Ziploc bag 
a Bic lighter for backup lighting the stove. And then here is the, uh, whoo, a little bit hard to get off. And my fingers are cold, give me a little bit of a break. Here is the stove, I believe it is an E-Tech City. Yep, E-Tech City stove. Uh, folds up real compact. You just slide those uh, wings out there. That's what I'm gonna call them at least. Slide them around. Screw it on here. Sorry, the shadows are kinda messing with me. Screw it on till it's tight. And then sometimes you can hear the release of gas as it goes um, into the stove through a little gasket. And then I'm gonna flip all of these, uh, all the little feet out. Turn it on. There we go. And then the last thing inside of this bag would be the uh, Tokes Titanium Cup. Uh, a lot of people like something a little bit bigger. There's a little bit of a burn spot that I can't get out. Uh, want something bigger to cook in. For me, I feel like a cup is just fine. So that's all I really need for uh, size-wise. Get this a little bit more level. Size-wise, that's pretty much all I need uh, for cooking purposes. So I'm not going to cook right now in front of you guys because I'll probably burn something or mess it up or burn myself. Uh, after this, checking out that sweet fire. Now pretty much raging over there. Definitely going to warm me right up. I'll give you guys a little sneak peek into my tent. And you can check out my sleeping setup here, at least for tonight. Uh, we've got... Uh, total cheapo Walmart closed cell foam pad on the bottom Then we have a 20 degree sleeping bag kind of old. I've had it for a while a 30 degree uh, US uh, Army uh, issue Patrol bag or whatever that's rated for like 30 degrees and then this um, Total cheapy Simu, I think is the brand super soft. It's all polyester a brush polyester I think sleeping bag and this is rated for 50 and then I have a little uh, digicam pillow that'll uh, keep me nice and cozy at night. So you guys can all do the math. I'm not going to do it right here, but that is a whole lot of warmth in one sleeping bag that I'm going to be in tonight because all of these will uh, close up inside of each other. And then, you know, I'll just have one super fluffy, super heavy uh, sleeping bag. Yes, it's a heavy system, but I wasn't hiking that far and I figured that would be all right. So kind of cool there. Cook myself some supper here. Took me a little bit longer than I thought to get the uh, fire going. That wood is just completely uh, waterlogged. You really have to get to the very middle of it uh, to be able to get anything that'll burn. But got that burning, that was all good. Um, Getting ready to settle down here, eat my supper, settle in for the night, warm up my feet. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what else we can crank out tonight uh, for video-wise. May wait till tomorrow. Uh, let's see if you guys can... Uh, there's a couple of different stars. See if I can get it to focus. Maybe not. Mainly right there. See that one nice and clear. Uh, really not that uh, bright of a night out here. I know I'm just showing you guys the here. I'll show you the fire so you guys don't get bored. Um, not a super bright bright light. I was just showing you guys the moon there. Super bright night out. You can't see a whole lot of stars. But there are definitely some out. And it would be a great night. There is zero wind, which I am very, very blessed by. Very blessed that there is no wind tonight. Because if there was any wind, the fire wouldn't have happened. Much of this filming would not have happened because I would have just gone straight to setting up camp, cooking my supper in 15, 20 minutes, and then going to bed because it would be way too cold. Ooh, actually, while I'm thinking about it, speaking of cold, here is the uh, temperature thermometer thing that I showed you guys earlier. Let's see what it says. It's been kind of cold. Check that out. It says negative 4.4. It may be messed up a little bit. The battery's been kind of low because it's been cold. 
See if we can get a better reading. Negative 2.6. That could be right. That could be right. But we'll see. We'll see. I maybe I'll put down. Maybe I will put down in the comments or say in the next video or whatnot. Uh, I'll check check the weather app and see what it says out here. But it is definitely cold. Definitely cold. So I'll warm up here by the fire and see you guys later. Alrighty, here we go. Have the supper cooked, a can of noodles. Warming up the feet by the fire. Being careful not to melt my soles of my shoe off. Nice little fire getting built back up. It kind of burned down, threw some more sticks on it and whatnot. It's not that late, it's only, uh, let me check, 8.40, you know, which feels like, you know, Four o'clock when I left out or 4 30 was forever ago but not that long just about four hours obviously sitting here um, you know enjoying the fire just thinking thinking how it's kind of kind of sad a little bit that more people don't uh, get out here and enjoy this because just about everybody either knows somebody who has access to this type of land or you know anybody can go to public land like I don't know, state parks or whatnot, and go hang out there, do this kind of stuff. And I know it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to come out and do backpacking or hiking or whatnot, but I think everybody should have a way that they can enjoy enjoy the outdoors. You know, people build up this whole big thing like, oh, the great outdoors, man versus wild or whatnot. Really, it's just a good way to enjoy time. Good way to spend your time, I mean, enjoy the outdoors. You sit out here and, you know, sip your noodles and sit by the fire that you built with your own two hands and, you know, started from a log that was sitting, you know, over there somewhere and hacked it up and split it into smaller pieces and then started a nice little fire that became a bigger one. Set up your tent where, you know, you're going to spend the night. Just think it's a real cool experience definitely for me I don't know about everybody else but definitely something I wish I can could get out and do more often and I'm gonna try to do do more often maybe take some videos take you guys along with me but just just thinking just uh, putting my thoughts out there a little bit don't know whether you guys I'm sure probably most people would agree that they'd want to get outside and kind of enjoy enjoy the outside more but you know whether it's going outside to play a game of catch with your kid if there's any dads or you know going outside to whatever play soccer play airsoft whatever you want to do outside do it with your siblings if you have them uh, I'm blessed to have you know three other siblings and uh, due to different ex different uh, situations and circumstances they weren't able to come with me this time but definitely be seeing them on some other trips I would imagine so I'll just hang out here and eat my supper probably won't uh, probably won't check in with you guys till tomorrow morning on the hike out but yeah it's real sitting here thinking that's one thing you get to do a lot you do a lot in the outdoors is just sit here and think and kind of mull over your your life and how you're doing and where you want to be all those different kind of cool things I know just watching some YouTube video with some kid sitting out here in Indiana watching a you know campfire probably not the most entertaining thing ever but yeah there's without the light just nature's TV out here really just enjoying everything but yep this will be this will be tack to pants signing off for the night. I'm gonna eat my supper here and even though it's kinda early, maybe read a little bit of a book that I brought and then turn it in. I'll check in with you guys tomorrow morning or unless something happens during the night that's super cool I have to show ya. But yep, yeah, we'll check in then. Tack to pants signing off. Alright, tack to pants viewers. <laughs> Give me a little giggle just to say my own YouTube handle, Tack to Pants. Uh, it is now morning uh, on the winter hiking trip. It was cold last night. 
even with my sleep system, I could still feel it was really cold. Where I was uh, breathing last night, had uh, the condensation had frozen on the side of my tent. Got the fire here completely burned out. Just a couple of ashes left. Yeah, not really any coals that I'm seeing that I'm going to restart the fire with. My tent and all my messy sleeping bags and whatnot. So I'll get packed back up here and uh, we'll get headed back on to uh, headed back home here in just a little bit. So once I get everything packed up, I'll probably give you guys a shout and say goodbye to my campsite and hello to the trail. Right there is where the tent used to be. Sat right there. Got everything else cleaned up, camera tripod, whatnot. A little bit of trash left to burn before we leave. Everything nice and clean, getting ready to head out here. Head back home. Nearing the end of our uh, journey here. Just have a little bit left to go. My estimation is probably probably 10 to 15 minutes left uh, until I'm done with this backpacking trip, which I felt went really good. Uh, if you guys have stuck around till this this point in the video, which is pretty much the end, kudos to all you guys because it is probably going to be a long one. I don't know what all the footage added up is going to be, but. I don't know, 30, 40, 50 minutes, something like that. May do a multi-part deal so you guys can kind of digest it a little bit slower. But getting to the end here. Had a couple of things that went wrong. Uh, handle on the hatchet kind of crapped out on me. Had to duct tape that, which worked pretty good. Not ideal by any means. You know, it would have been better if it didn't crack at all, but as long as I wore gloves and was kind of careful on how I used it. it seemed to be all right that bear grills knife was really a surprise have a big old chip in the blade there have it decided whether I'm going to try to sharpen that out or whether I'm going to just send it back to Gerber and say uh I was beating on your knife in the woods and I chipped a little bit of it so we'll see even though it chipped anyways that was a huge freaking piece of wood and so I am not all that um, disappointed with the blade. That was a really big piece of wood and I was pounding on it, which it should be able to take, but I've had it for, you know, year, two years, something like that. And it has processed a lot of wood for me. So for a $30 knife to process, you know, trips and trips and trips worth of food or worth of uh, wood, excuse me, I think that'd be pretty good. If I wanted to upgrade to something like an Ontario Rat, uh, you know, Rat 7, RTAC 2, something like that, that's probably what I'll do in the future. But for now, that the Mora, which I use as a backup fixed blade, that worked really good. Uh, really good for processing the rest of that wood, getting my fire started, getting a little bit of morale boost and everything. Because let me tell you what, like right there, there's a whole bunch of standing water. Not the same as the patch I showed you, I think in the first, first probably half of the videos. Uh, just completely frozen solid out there. It is very cold, it's about 18 degrees right now. Hiking isn't too bad once you get moving, but now we have some wind. So that's why I'm kind of staying down in this little, this little type of ravine area. Not really a ravine, more of just a low spot because that's where I'm off of the wind makes hiking a little bit easier you know keep warm and whatnot so had a real good trip a couple of bottles but overall really fun first winter winter backpacking trip and first solo winter backpacking trip hopefully you know the first of many <laughs> first of many and we'll see like I said earlier we'll see if we can bring you guys along for a couple more of them
So this is Tax Pants signing off. I'll see y'all later. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to. Keep an eye out for new videos coming up and everything. And I'll see you later.